The forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Back to Queen of Embers, episode 41 and probably 42. I'm your game master, Daniel Fox. These are the players, the cult, the people who made oh, yeah. all this really cool. Tim, would you drop the uh, lid a little bit? Yeah. So you're not looking at <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, we're all, we're all looking at it, right? I did. I, I'm I'm I was like, hey guys. guys. Yeah. Hey guys. The great thing is now, like, as opposed to looking past you all and talking to the camera over there, yeah. I would just be looking at you guys like yeah. this and picking up my movements. So, um, uh, first off, Mongosh, early release. Boom! It's out right here. Well, it's not out for you guys yet. Um, it doesn't come out until September. Totes jelly, huh? Uh, but we've got our copies here from Angels of the Universal. They're beautiful. They're amazing. Um, you all will see them soon. You probably saw my unboxing video online. Um, it's crazy. It's great. So uh, go out there and pre-order it. It's a natural fit for Zvallander. It is literally a left-handed yeah. weapon. It's super light. Uh, 360 odd pages of awesome chaotic delight. Uh, a perfect complement for the hander. It's not a splat book. It's a perfect supplement with lots of extra stuff on it. So all that aside, we're gonna jump right into the game. Last week, you had gotten to a fracas with these mountain dwellers, and the Blackfire Pass had narrowly escaped with the mantle and teetering back and forth with the wind, kind of heating through these narrow passes. You fought a very tense battle back and forth. But more of these mountain folk kept pouring forth from the hills. You finally cross the bridge. The wheels rattling and rumbling and the mandolin kind of swinging back and forth, creaking and groaning with every single bump on the road. And suddenly, with the team of oxen that remain in front, you hear the horns of the mountain folk deep within the black fire. And suddenly you find yourselves racing against time down this narrow switchback being led at the front by Yaksh! Harper, who's at the head of this team of oxen on his horse and behind him rattling and, and, and bumping and moving this huge, huge land ship. Birds and condors will begin to gather in the air just waiting for the dead. Flocks of birds are kind of following in your wake, likely following the mountain folk as they kind of happen upon, well, People who pass through the Blackfire Pass, which is a pretty rare occurrence. Nonetheless, things are not looking good. There's a couple dead bodies in them back there they can chew on. That's right. right. <laughs> ah, right. So, as we mentioned before, uh, Alistair is being retired to an NPC, and now Walter will be playing Jonathan Vander, one of the, the fancy aristocrats of the 13 who gave it all up to follow the Prophet. And it is with Jonathan that our story begins. You and Cecilia are on top of the deck of the Crucible, as it's been called. That which had given birth to the Prophet. You were being pursued by some ungodly things from the mountains. That you'd certainly heard stories of, but these these men are not would not be easily mistaken for men at all. They are tall and lanky and poorly dressed and appear to have crawled forth from the earth to chase after you. Jonathan looks towards everyone atop deck. Can you describe what Jonathan looks like? Absolutely. So, he's a very tall, sort of lanky gentleman of not quite middle age. He's got the pale skin not only of uh, Aridane, but the uncalloused hands of someone who hasn't done a a, a lot of work. I, I guess his features could be described as sort of uh, sort of ink smudged. He doesn't look like he's uh, been out in the sun for more than three days in a row. Probably this trip is the the longest. He has sort of a uh, long brown hair that he 
has clearly not kept her watch in a long time either because that's his normal look or because uh, he's been on the road and hiding in the uh, the cabin of this uh, ship. But he has it tied back sort of crudely off center to one side so that it doesn't get in his, uh, into his way. He has a lot of nervous tics. Like he's constantly like when he sits, you notice that he his legs shake or he rubs his hands together or he's like playing with his hair or his like thin beard. He can't pot he can never keep his hands still. And you can see at least on one hand he's got like a burn on one of his fingers, which indicates he smokes probably a lot. Right. There's always that uh He's burned himself on his uh, on his pipe smoking. That's right. At some point. So for those who are uh, particularly, you haven't sp- probably spared more than a few words with him at this point, and he's uncertain as to what words to share yet. But he's an indoor sword, no question about it. Keep in mind that you'd only uncovered Jonathan Vander and Cecilia Vander, his Two days ago. wife. Not but a day ago. It was back in Hastings, yeah. No, because they helped us. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she it. helped us with the repairs. Right. He didn't do anything. <laughs> that's right. Over. So, all of this is happening at once. If you wouldn't mind, Kay, be sure to change Alistair to Jonathan. Yeah. And he is Jonathan Ben. So, atop the <laughs> Madeline. Fortunately, everything has been tied, has been moored up, so nothing's rolling around back and forth. But the Madeline's bouncing back and forth at this point. Who among you is drove, to be droving the oxen? It was me and uh, Big Lee. That's right. Okay. So, we will actually begin. I can drive from the top if there's, is there some kind of Brains appear, or is no. there some kind of <laughs> big wheel? No, uh, there is for the ship. That good you just question. Spin and does nothing. <laughs> uh, but no, Brong is on horseback beside the oxen, uh-huh. and she's kind of snapping this, cracking this whip over him. Okay. Harper is as well beside them, kind of, kind of urging yeah, them urging. onward. Yeah, trying to somewhat control the chaos of stampeding oxen. Yes, mm-hmm. is there a drum? Is there a way for us up on the top to to assist them through uh, yeah. keeping natives uh, away from them? Uh, it won't really matter for purposes of the chasing, but for, okay. for, for, but we, for mechanically, but we can say that you are throwing anything you possibly can grab off the top of the Madeline off the edge to kind of promote some road hazard along the way. So we'll actually allow you to give that. It's a good thought. We'll actually give you a mechanical bonus for that. We'll actually give you a head start. So, this will be the medium chase scene. You all are racing against time, hoping they don't catch up to you. The the um, beasts are chasing after you, and you're just kind of bouncing around on top of the Madeline, holding on for dear life. There's no possible way that you could do anything but hold on unless you be cast off the top of the Madeline. Let's hope that a complication does not <laughs> turn about due to this. So, oh, this, <laughs> this will be a medium chasing. So that means you need to beat you have six rounds. All right. So, uh, you are going to set the threshold. So what you will do is you will roll 1d10. Uh, you will add your brawn bonus. In this case, because you're uh, riding. So... Right is brawn, right? Right is a agility. <laughs> add your agility bonus and add plus three to that. So ch- set the th- chase threshold for us first, off, first off. Agility is five. And then we'll roll on the table. Four. So that's nine. And then you said plus three. Uh huh. Okay. So that'd be a 12. 12. Okay. So here's what's happening. At the point that you begin racing down the edge of the. Uh... You can hear this? Yes. I have spirited charge. Does that help with the chasing? Absolutely. Add, add add that. Yep, you bet. So 15. Nice. So whenever I use the right skill, I get to add three to my <laughs> Yay. 
So how much do we have? Fifteen. Fifteen. Nice. I don't understand. It was a round of applause. So the mountain folk are chasing after you, literally on foot. Uh, let's see what happens here. Okay. So you feel the battle line surge as the oxen just suddenly begin picking up. And you begin putting about five or so yards between you and them. And they're moving boom, 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 moving as fast as they can up on their spindly legs. And they're more long-legged than they are tall. They almost kind of like, to some degree, have legs that come up about mid-waist as they kind of walk like this, kind of lurching toward you all. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a head start in your pretty, you're about five yards ahead of them at this point. You've got some time to kind of collect yourselves during this this period. What do you want to do? You all are top deck at this point in the battle line. Everybody save for Harper. Um, can I use takedown ranged? Absolutely. I'm going to start uh, flinging arrows at whoever I can to try and slow them down, either stunning blow or takedown. Just takedown as well. Okay. So I guess we could probably just start at the top of the initiative. Elisa. That's probably a better idea. Okay. Sorry. Elisa, what would you like to do? Uh, probably the same, just harass with arrows. I don't have takedown from range, so I can't do that. But, yeah, I'll just harass them. Is that a special ability you have? It is. It is. It is. It is. It's, it's a, a talent. Talent I have. I'll take them down. Mm-hmm. So she's just going to take aim and Okay, so as you stand up and you let go of what you're holding on to, you need to immediately make a coordination test. Let's do this. You let go to... Whoa! It's going to be a challenging one. Uh, 19 should be fine. Okay. You find your footing. However, you are unable to use any movement actions that exceed 1 AP. So you cannot get up if you fall. You want to move twice, you get a hustle, and from your vantage point, you're nowhere near the edge. So you need to hustle over to the edge, about five yards, before you do any of this. Okay, and that's, so one AP for that, one to aim, one to shoot? Mm -hmm. That's right. So you get to the very edge, you're up on the, the stern, or the forecastle of the, the thing you're in. You're literally like 18 feet up. Yep. There are more, and you draw an arrow for one AP, and you loose. It is going to be a challenging test. All right, so I've got a 52, so 42. A 30 will do it. All right. Little damage. One. So that's plus uh, brawn, right? That's agility. Or agility, so mm -hmm. four. Four damage? Yeah. All right. The arrow kind of skips off. It kind of catches in the bit of the folds of these these people's fur and does nothing to remain unharmed. Warren, what do you want to do? I'm going to see if there's any way I can strap myself down and hold on for dear life. Absolutely. You can have <laughs> hunger down and you oh you hold on to the nearest board or, or side of the side of the ship or whatever it may be on top and you're fine. Harper? Yeah. Drove me, okay. Well, you already yeah, made your yeah, test. Yeah, good there. Manneker, what do you want to do? Um, <clears throat> I want to move to the edge. I have Saddleborn, so I can move well on uh, horseback and vehicles. That's right. You. Aha! You walk over the edge without having to worry about making any skill tests. Just one AP to move. Hustle. Okay. Okay. You hustle to the edge. What do you do now? I will uh, draw. I will draw. And fire, but I'm going to use take them down. Okay, so wh whichever one's nearest, just kind of. Which I don't have a okay. warfare, so. That's right. Yeah. Large creatures shooting at them. That's right. Okay. Flump. It's going to be a challenging test. Okay. I get uh, plus 10% for Shadowborn also. The strike. Nice. So, 50. Go for the toes. 65. <laughs> That's a 92. Can I re-roll that guy? Absolutely. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll take that as a And a 43 is a success. OK. 
Okay, nice. Do you want to take him down? Or? Take him down. Okay, so let's see. Resist. 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 Their chance. Extraordinarily uh, helpful in this It's going to be 30%. Mm -hmm. 51. No! One of them stumbles, rolling on the ground. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> leaving them in your wake as you will reduce their chase value by one. Nice. Woo! All right. Jonathan. Oh, the most important thing is, uh, are there any, like, spare ropes since we don't have a full team of oxen anymore? Absolutely. I'm going to see to my wife first, like, hold on, look. I'm going to draw up a rope and, like, basically give her an anchor to the, uh, to the ship. Okay. Start tying knots and, uh, and making ways for people to secure themselves to the deck. Fantastic. Good idea. So do you want to tie, like, a length of rope with knots in it? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and make a survival little... test. This right. test will be uh, easy. I read a book about this somewhere before. <laughs> Makes some arts and knots. My parents right. paid for me to be in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> right. Gentlemen, gen gentry first. scouts. Gentry scouts. Gentry scouts. Gentry scouts. Lad scouts. I was in the lad ranges. <laughs> it's a 74% chance. I rolled a critical success. Nice. nice! So we will assume, because Jonathan made a crit success with survival, that anytime you wish to move top deck, you nobody need make any skill tests if you let yourself lose, but you still have to adhere to the cannot spend more than one action point to move forward. Fantastic. Nice. Okay, so we're all chain games. That's right. Mm. Terwin. Uh, Terwin's going to uh, start barking orders. He's just going to uh, be telling them, like, uh, keep that, keep those arrows raining down on them, so that they they don't want to give chase anymore. Uh, Whoa, and see if there's anything we can we can throw over the edge that isn't necessary. Uh, you know, uh, Jonathan, make sure that we don't get lost once we're all tied up. That was a good. That was a good idea there. Uh, you know, just continuing to call out sure. orders and trying to trying to lead them. Inspiring words. Yeah. Okay. I make leadership tests. Put your current damage condition track. <laughs> current damage condition track is seriously wounded. Ooh, so that's a uh, that's a standard test. All right. I lost the details. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a challenging test. Challenging leadership test will be an amazing 38. I got this. And I got a two something, seventy two. Oh, that was a twenty two. Yeah, no, we're not gonna reroll that. We'll just <laughs> stay. But, what? Uh, what? No one can hear you. What? <laughs> I mean, that's what he thinks. Boss, he I can't hear you. That's it's what the mass and the windiest. Yeah, that's what he thinks. He says it's just a whole bunch of swear words. So you <laughs> failed the first time. That's one action point. You want to try again? Uh. Nah. Um. No, because I have a feeling it'll get worse. So you do the rest of your action points. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna take out his shield and just uh, make shield. sure. That's oh right. yeah. Have that. that broke. That's right. He got shattered. Uh, uh, he's just going to hold on for dear life then. <laughs> okay. So, say the AP. Okay. Uh, do me one more favor, Kay, please. Mm -hmm. Put uh, Mountain Folk at the top of Above Amigo Elisa. You hear the war horns once again as they continue chase. Uh, so, Harper, I need you to roll your uh, D10 and add your agility bonus. That's it. Alright. Five plus seven. Twelve. Nice. Or okay. I guess plus three fifteen. That's right. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, let's see how far that gets. Eight. Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. Well, you're moving a very steady clip at this point. You're moving very fast, in fact. There's tumbling rock and animal there's birds kind of careening overhead. The pass is getting narrower, and it's clear that it's becoming challenging trying to get through here. But it appears that the mountain folk know their way as they inch ever so closer as they're now two yards away from the Madeline. Or sorry, from the Oxen, my apologies. Did you reduce that by one? Uh, no, I did not. Good point. <laughs> uh, three yards. You're three yards out. Good call. Elisa, what will you do? That's the, that's the second round now of the chase. She will go ahead and take aim and attempt to hit them again. Okay. It is a challenging test. It's only three hours away now. An 85 will not hit. The arrow hit.
hits the ground and snaps. Yeah, one AP left. Uh, oh, no, sorry, take aim, load, fires, three AP. Yep, so I am dead. Warren. Uh, I guess I will load, take aim, and fire. You'll need to hustle over first. Okay, I will hustle. That's one AP. Load. Load is one AP. Take aim. That's three AP. Done. Okay, so you're <laughs> holding your shot. I'm gonna get you! Remember, you can use a fortune point for an action point to take well, shot. I'll just use that take aim for my next shot. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so Harper's turn now. Still got a, hey, me already, right? That's right. Harper, go ahead and put a, a check mark beside Harper if you would, real quick, for me, please. Thank you. This is the drawback for uh, sitting by the board to get to control the, yep, the initiative. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Welcome network. to Walter's job. That's right. <laughs> Benacore. What will you do? Uh, I will do the exact same thing, uh, but now that I have uh, the additional time, I will aim twice. So keep in mind, you must load, which is one AP. Okay. Load. What kind of what kind of bow do you have? First off, what are you firing with? Hunting. Right? Hunting. Okay, so it's one AP load. Yep. So load, aim, and take down. We get challenging dust. Okay, which is wiped out from my Saddleborn. That is 58 does it. Nice. Okay, let's see if they resist. It is a challenging test for them once again. 30%. 73 will not do it. It's another one. Ooh, a stat at this point kind of staggers back and falls off. As there are still several in tow. So many, in fact, it's hard to count. Because you're moving so quickly and quickly through the switchbacks, you're losing sight of them just as quickly as you see them. You see a few more kind of seem to kind of scramble down from the sides of the hills as they're pursuing you very quickly. That brings us to Jonathan Van Der. I'll lean my head sort of out and take a look at, uh, since they're right next to the battle line, basically. They are. They're right up on the, uh, up on the, uh, and I will get a, I will calculate an accurate uh, number okay. for them. You have incredible numeration. I do, actually, nice. as a matter of fact. All right. I can count quickly. I can do you. math. It's like, it's like the like symbols in that, in that meme. Like yes. the symbols. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, for uh, one, so, for, two, three. so for one AP, you may, or for two AP, you kind of clock them as they're kind of coming around the hills and such, and you, you clock at least 12 of them. I'll yell out. Two. A dozen! Two have been fell. Minus fell. one, not that. Minus 12 remain. Now. 12 remain. Well, a dozen remaining. Oh, ah, two. <laughs> yeah, one AP left. What would you like to do, Jonathan? Um, I know these, I know these tribes because I know like these people. I'll think back into like my deepest studies to see if I can remember like a superstition about the mountain people of the passes. Mm -hmm. Something that might give us an advantage that we can take advantage of. Certainly. Make it a challenging folklore test. All right. So, 65. It is a 55% chance. Red first, as always. 12. I do remember something. Nice. Well, you do recount Maybe. that the people of the mountain follow a god simply called the Crouching One. They, uh, the Crouching One is in the, of the, of the Aridane, is a god of murder. Mm. What it represents to these people, you're not really clear. Um, give us the American education. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, you know that these mountain folk have been long reputed to be cannibals. In fact, it is believed that these people were born, uh, were remnants of the tribes scattered after the Blackfire campaign uh, back in 140. And that uh, a terrible snowstorm had basically kind of locked them in to the Mallinsons, and they had repeatedly resorted to cannibalism. Whether this is true or not, it's hard to say, but it is the story that you've heard. Yeah. They're hungry. They are indeed hungry. You can't imagine anyone who comes through these passes at all. Yeah. So that's your third AP. Right. I'll Check. yell out, just throw them something, some dried meat or something in my... Tailing off. Mm -hmm. Terwin. Terwin will uh, hustle over to where Warren is. Okay. You come over holding on to the rope. 
Not a just right and just so for you to get over there easily. What are you thinking? Warren is hesitating as he's trying to line up a shot. Uh... Okay, and then uh, I'll uh, look over to where he's... So I'll try and figure out where he's lining that shot up. There's one literally on the edge of the ship. And she is almost near where she could climb up to a rope. Okay. Uh, Terwin will uh, draw his sword, and then he'll make an action point. Okay. You draw your sword, Terwin, and you make an action point. If they match this time around, they will be able to board the battle line. So, uh, we will need to make set threshold once again. This is the third round. You hear the horns once again. Five plus three, so eight. And then... One! Oh, God, no! Uh-oh. So what's your Nine. Yeah, one they got it. Yeah. One no. Thirty-nine. So they have a twenty-seven currently. Eight plus three. Nine, ten, eleven. Up. Uh, minus two. Yeah. Eight. Thirty... Five. You managed to get <laughs> four yards away. If you wouldn't have uh, taken down those two, it would have been, it'd been very, very close. Suddenly, as you're kind of lining up your shot, you see them kind of drop back. They almost got to that those two ropes that are dropped off the side on either side of the Madeline. Elisa, what will you do? Uh, seeing that they got the close to the ropes, I'm going to pull them up. You are nowhere near the ropes because Puzzle you went to the... one and then pull So one. unfortunately, the Madeline's about thirty, uh, about uh, thirty feet across, so it's going to be ten yards to get there. Okay, well then I will hustle once. Yes. Take aim, fire, and then I'll have to hustle the next. Okay, one. so if you hustle away, you won't have a clear line of shot on them. Uh, you must be on the edge of the ship to fire. Yes. Would I be able to? In- well, can I shoot and then run? So, absolutely. Let's do that. Yeah, this is not DNA. Change order. Yeah. You want to take aim, <laughs> then fire, then hustle? Yes. Okay. So you line up a shot and boom, loose an arrow. It's challenging. An eight will do it. Nice. Nice. Roll damage. Roll damage, please. Uh, well, nine. Ooh, not enough. These. That is my max. Large. Explosion? Mountain folk. Oh, oh wait, it was a six. Oh, hey! Uh, twelve. Nice! Probably uh, still not enough. I was like, if it was your max, it should have exploded. The arrow locks right into one of the, the mountain folk's women, and she groans, kind of stumbling, grabbing onto you. You see this little trickle of red blood as she's lightly wounded. For your action, Elisa goes, Finally! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then she moves away. And then it's like, I'm successful, I'm okay. I, don't need I hit one! <laughs> I, <got it. laughs> I did my job, I'm done. I got it! <laughs> I did my job. Okay, so now you're gonna hustle across. Yeah. How far can you hustle? Uh, let's see, what's movement? Movement is a dance, a dance, a dance, a dance, double, double, everywhere. I just black box that, that's right. You're you're getting across the top of the Madeline, holding onto the rope, and you're not quite close enough. Keep in mind that it takes 2 AP to interact. So even when you get to the rip, you must spend two AP to lift to pull it up. So, Warren, it is your turn. I just realized that I left my bow down way back there. So, so you're like, it doesn't exist. So you've got an arrow held in the hand, and you're like, oh wait, <laughs> this, well, this isn't gonna work. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, you, you did you mark it off your character sheet? Yes, it's gone. Okay. Uh, did you erase it? Yes. Okay. So if you were missing, some, if your shield is gone or you left something in your wake on the ground, I think somebody lost a spear. If I'm not mistaken. I don't have a cudgel. I don't yeah, have any cudgel. Weapons. That's right. I think uh, if you ha- if it's missing, obviously mark it off your sheet. But I can't give you your turn over, but you can correct what you want to do moving forward. I'll just yeah. yeah I'll just throw. I'll hold the ropes up there right next. You're to not me. near the rope. You're okay. six yards away. That's okay. Cool. I will hustle to the ropes. So what's your movement? My movement is six. So you can get to the rope. That's why okay. I be. And then I will haul them up. Okay, so you pull one of the ropes up. Okay. There are two ropes dangling from either side. Right. So, that is your turn, Harper. Or, sorry, Warren. Harper, you're clearly droving the, yep. the oxen. Go! Harung's like, we're almost oh, there! <laughs> I can see the mountain valley from this side, she says. Exasperated. Banneker, what are you going to do? Mark off your ammunition, too, guys. I have been. I have been. Guys is a y'all. No, they're gonna go back and recover the arrows afterwards. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to chase I'm gonna chase What do you want to do? Uh, uh, same thing. Nice. Okay. Aim, 
take him down. Okay, it's uh, gonna be challenging. Okay, 65 still because uh, I have uh, Settle Board. Can I? Too late. What? No, it's too late. <laughs> so it's done, it's done. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, 68. I'm gonna take one more of these. Okay, can I see whichever one he's shooting at? Sure. You're like, right there! Put it in me! Spend your action point to assist? Yeah. Yeah! So now your test is now standard instead. Oh, nice. Yeah, you, remember, you can assist as a reaction. And sure in combat. Can. That's a 20, so. Nice! Okay, roll damage. Or, uh, I guess I'm going to resist. It's a 30% chance to resist. Hey. Uh, 29. Oh, so he res that, that one resisted. So, yeah, unfortunately, they did not tumble and fall. Okay. Uh, yeah, still pretty good. So that brings us to Jonathan Vanda. Did that increase? Does that change his to hard? Of... What's that? No. Okay. That was a quick question for the rule. That makes it standard. Okay. No, okay. His was standard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's always the opposite. opposite. Three. But yeah, so remember, assist is a reaction yep. in combat. It can cost one, two, or three action points. Yep. If you have action points banked, you can absolutely assist other people attacking. Yep. And a, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, an assist in this case is literally... Um, it should be at an assist die, but we'll, we'll correct that moving forward. I'll, uh, how close am I to the other rope that still needs to be drawn up? Six yards away. I can get there. Yeah. All right, I'll just, I'll actually, like, okay. take the rope over there and, like, grab the other rope and, uh, and pull it up, realizing what they're doing. The ropes are pulled up, which is good. It will make their clamoring up the side of the Madeline even more difficult. Remember, the Madeline is held in a cradle of timber and nails. <laughs> so the ropes were helpful for you to get up, but at their size, the span of the timbers, well, you can imagine what would happen. Nonetheless, it would not be as easy as they would have uh, would have had the chances before. This is very good. So Taryn, it brings us to you. Uh, Taryn is just going to keep an eye out and he's going to see if he can try and uh, call out shots. Okay. Um, since that seemed to... Bank your APs? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now, once again, Terra will set the threshold in the fourth round. Fourth of six. Uh -huh. What happens? Plus four. Twelve. Nice. Didn't help you this time, though, man. Eight plus... Ooh! I rolled a ten. Oh, no! Ooh, yeah! Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. You had a 51 and they have a 53. Yeah, they do. They are kind of boom, boom, boom. One of them grabs on to the side of the Madeline and they're like swinging out as they kind of like climb it almost like uh, King Kong. Yeah. Uh, as they're trying to clamber up the side, a few of them at least. Let's see if they actually are able to ascend and how many actually do ascend. So, first off, the only ones that actually got to here, the chasing is now over, they've caught up. But they're boarding the Madeline. <laughs> only four got up. Let's see Let's see how many of the four get on top. So they got a, uh, so it's athletics. 75%. That's one, two, three. I rolled zero four, four time, three times in a row. Four of these mountain folk managed to ascend the side of the Madeline. The rest are left in your dust in the wake of the Black Fire Pass. And that's when you realize you're coming through a pass where water is literally just kind of pouring down off a tall mountaintop, kind of almost crystallizing in air, and you can see this broad kind of rainbow over the pass itself. There's a lot of white haze in the air as you're coming down through the switchbacks. And you could have sworn between the mist, you could see where the valley opens, where it would open up near, near to where you get to Kaelterian. The four of them are now top deck with all of you. And the Madeline is still racing down the switchback. So, uh, I'm going to roll initiative now for the Mountain Folk. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Kay, give me a 7 plus 0. So give me a 17. So put them between Harper and Banneker, the Mountain Folk. 
and you can erase the check mark from Harper's name. Okay, we will start from here with Harper, because you were the one who was setting the threshold threshold for the chase originally. Okay. Beginning of combat. What happens? Uh, I'm gonna try and do tech. If there's, can they? Are they climbing in the beginning of combat? So, uh, combat has not begun. They're now on top deck. Okay. So, uh, Banneker, you are a smuggler, so you get Han shot first. So, what would you like to do? Aim, or uh, load, aim, take down. Okay. <laughs> you lose an arrow. It's going to be challenging. Okay, sixty-five. Thirty-nine. Okay. Let's see if they resist. It is going to be forty percent for them now. Thirteen. The arrow because <laughs> sticks right in the in the wood. So you can hear the ogres are up top here now. You can feel the wind, the creaking of the battle line. You can hear the falling of the uh, of the waterfalls nearby, the growling of these mountain people, rocks tumbling all around you along through the passes. You can hear the roars of something out there. And Harper, what will you do? Alright, so you quickly assess the situation. You realize that all four have been lightly wounded. Okay. Um, so what I'll do then, uh, about how far away are they from me? Uh, they are ten yards. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. You're on the ground. That's right. right. So, if you're leading the oxen, right. a team, a score of oxen, you're probably about 20 yards ahead. Right. And so, are the oxen stopped? No, they're still, everything's still moving, unless you want to bring them to a halt. No, I want to um, probably keep them moving, because if there's still eight more behind there or so, because you said a dozen. That's right. Then I want to keep on moving these horses, or okay. these oxen. Okay. Probably wise to yeah. do so. So, that's just going to be a handle animal test. Okay. This test will be uh, routine. For, sorry, not routine. Um, easy for you. Easy. All right. I believe I am in your right? That's fine. Uh, that'd be it's a, fail, it's a fail forward skill test, yep. by the way. There's a 21 success. Okay. All right, so that's one AP. Yuck! You continue the oxen. The oxen keep droving the oxen through the switch back, and you're coming near where you can hear the waterfall, and you can feel the mist in the air at mm -hmm. this point. Um, so what I'll do then is uh, I'll hold the reins in one hand um, and I'll draw my pistol in the other hand. Okay. And then I'll bank my last eight. Okay. <laughs> the mountain folk come up top. You <clears throat> loosen air and <clears throat> it strikes the ground. All of them. Boom, boom, boom. You can hear the you can hear the wood kind of creaking beneath their heavy footfalls. And keep in mind they're they're about as tall as I am to you. They're about, you know, about eight and a half feet tall. One of them comes rushing across the way with bare hands, and she tries to grab you. Pull you into a chokehold. No coordination test for that? No. So her chances are 60. Or 47. Would you like to escape for a... An athletics test, and this test for you will be challenging. Okay, 32. I don't make it, and it doesn't matter. She's I'm one away from incapacitated, so I'm done. She grabs a hold of. of um, I don't think it does physical damage, though. No, it does not. No, it's peril, and I'm yep. one away from incapacitated. Grabs Banneker, and has Banneker held a bear hug. As Banneker will suffer 10 plus 10, 20 physical peril. She lifts Banneker up. Banneker drops his weapons to the ground. She has a hold of him like such and just drops him on the ground. Like a rag doll, his body just slumps over as he is incapacitated. You are not knocked out. Keep this in. Or actually, I'm sorry, it's chokehold. You are knocked out. Uh -huh. And you're knocked out for 10 minutes because her bra is 10. Um, be sure to mark six corruption if you're really incapacitated. Banneker just kind of flops to the ground at this point. 
The other one comes over in a bull rush toward Terwin with hands out. For a kick in. This will be uh, 45 minutes. 65. And there's no charge on that because you can't charge on top of this. Uh, 13. Okay. You made an athletics test. Your test is challenging. Okay. Uh, so since they did a charge, is it resisting with that? There is no charge. They're hustling. Okay. It so, can use two action point movements right. up here. Right, so coordination. Uh, 24 will succeed. Nice. Okay. As you manage to withstand that, the, 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 the thing, the mountain folk thing, grabs both hands like such and such, just kind of brings them down uh, as your, your back is a bit exposed. Um, for just a bearing into the pack. Uh, this test will be uh, 70% chance. 74 is a okay. miss. However, I've missed fortune point. I will yeah. use. A 91 will not do it. Okay. Does not connect cool. you. Oh, you managed to get out of the way just in time. You look over and see Banneker on the ground. He could probably use a smelling salt right now. Um, two of them are in. Elisa, where you're on the very edge where you were firing arrows before, yeah. it begins maneuvering toward you. Uh, it attempts to take you down off of your feet. This will be a 40% chance. A 16 will hit. So you need to withstand with a challenging coordination test. 12 will do it. All right. At least stand, manages to stand. This thing looms over her, but she, with a quickly ducking out of the way, she manages to dodge out of the way, or to sidestep out of the way, but not before the thing drops to the ground with a large sweeping foot uh, for a barehanded attack. That's 70%, sorry, 60% chance to strike. Roll 35. Give me AP. 30. Nope. 35. Nope. 35. Okay. It's pummeling, so it's 10 plus explosion. For 22 damage. Okay. Puts me at seriously wounded. Ugh. Roll 2d6. Let's see if you are injured. Five, two, three. Yeah. No injuries for Elisa, fortunately. And one remains. Now I mean they come over to Ward Warren. Hi Warren. Hey. What were you doing before Warren? I was pulling up a little. That's right. So you get the rope in hand. Okay. The thing comes over towards you, and with the big meaty hand just kind of tries to slap you across the chest for a stunning blow. And I have no AP because it's the beginning combat. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> um, so it's a 70% chance. Sorry, 60% chance. 72 is a miss, but I'll use my last misfortune point. You stagger back, but uh, you were not stunned, fortunately. Earl is 62. <laughs> but uh, as that happens, the other hand comes down just for a hammer hand, just bringing it down over the back of your neck for a 60% chance to strike. And a 91 will miss. So, the Mountain Folk's turn is now over. Banneker is lying on the ground, can barely do anything. You can still, can't you, really you still have action point. Oh, I'm sorry, you're incapacitated, my apologies. Yeah. You're right, you're, you're knocked out, my apologies. If you would, yeah. put uh, KO beside Banneker for me, please. Thank you. Jonathan, that leaves you, my friend. I'm going to go for a, uh, a pretty risky gambit here, fellas and ladies. I'm going to attempt to communicate with them. Ooh. I'm going to try to use my linguistic skills to indicate disease. No good. <laughs> ah, okay, so we'll assume they're of a different social class. <laughs> <laughs> Just assume. Uh, I don't be. think you, you're not order of chaos aligned to this point. Neutrally aligned. That's right. But you're not, you do not speak their native tongue. Um, and they are clearly intending harm. No, but I have multilingual. That's right. So I can communicate rudimentary with everyone. That's right. So, so 
Uh, this will be for you <laughs> a hard guile test or a hard charm test. All right. It's up to you which you wish to yeah. do. I'll go with charm. Okay. So it's not a very good chance, unfortunately, but it's worth the risk. A 28%. Red first. Red first. Come on, dice. Ah, uh, 72. Okay. I buying it. Ew. It's not a very good chance. You guys want me hey. to try it again? Should, no. I, should I take a shot at it? Your call. I kind of feel like if we don't get it, we're, we might be dead. No, you guys might not. I just figured we were dead. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> all right, let's go for it. Okay. It's, it's times like this that we have to right. they have to go all in. Well, here's this. Come on, red dice. Come on, red dice. Oh four. Nice. Hey! What's your fellowship oh, bonus? I was like, it was a ten, and I was like, uh, What's your you fellowship bonus? Goes, it's a four. Well, so you, so four of the mountain folk kind of how many there are? They kind of, for a moment, they kind of clock what he's saying, and they look toward one another. And let's see if he actually manages to break morale. <laughs> let's see what happens to them at this point. So uh, they will attempt to withstand us using a resolve test. This test for them is a 50% chance of success. Uh-oh. 50-50. Very respectable. 94. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have yeah. one yeah, misfortune yeah, point that I think I'm going to hold on to. A what? Oh. Because who knows what will befall this evening here in Blackfire Pass. I'll hold on to this. Okay. So Jonathan <laughs> manages we to so wave his arms and speak in this series of clicking and grunts and syllables. <laughs> and they kind of look toward one another, including the one who's been wounded, uh, who's been hobbled before. Somebody has an infected wound. Is it you? No. <laughs> you have an infected scar, though. I've seen that. But you had an infection before that you well, Before, that. yeah. So I'm going to use that as the... As the indicator. Well, there's probably a few. Doing. Jonathan yeah, grabs Terowin and points toward him as gesticulating and speaking, you know, like he's speaking in broken ald, uh, in, in a mishmash of that in the language of the Dun- of the Dunish. And uh, somehow manages to convince them to kind of take a few steps back. And they're kind of at the back of the Madeline at this point, kind of looking toward one another, waiting and watching, uncertain what to do. The Madeline is still trundling down the road, creaking and groaning this way and that, and you're now passing right by, right by, the uh, the uh, waterfall. It's very, very close. The air is now awash in mist, making it difficult to see a lot, as the air is partially crystallized. Because remember, it's late autumn. There's just kind of mist everywhere. You can feel the water kind of kind of splashing off the nearby rocks of the of the pass itself. What do you all want to do? We're out of combat at this point. Do you tell us that that's what you did? I'm leaning into to tear one's ear and I'm like, like, tell them to not make any quick movements. No sudden movements, please. Don't make any sudden movements, please. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. <laughs> I want you to. I want you to. No, you don't have to say that. Uh, I'm saying you don't have to. Say, oh, wait. This is bad here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I let go of your arm, foam at the mouth and start to convulse upon the ground. Just trust me, okay? Listen to me. I know what I'm doing. And I'll keep saying to them as best I can no eat sick, no eat bad. <laughs> All right. Mm. All right. <laughs> so. Taryn, what will you do? Did I do that go on my own? Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Taryn does his best to feign sickness. Now, will anyone like to assist Taryn in this, who has a skill rank in God? What will you do? <laughs> well, once she sees what's happening, uh, Elisa is going to try to vomit on command. Over to the side. To what? Oh, vomit on command. Nice! <laughs> do you have that ability? That's 
<laughs> She's <Sure>. a wrestler. <laughs> sure, yeah, no shit. I have forked tongue. I'm assuming they're a different social class, and that gives me pluses to guy. <laughs> sure. <It's> just, uh, <laughs> so, uh, in order to force yourself to vomit, I'm, uh, I'm going to need, well... I don't need you to make a skill test to force yourself to vomit. So I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna suffer peril. For Mike, will you That's get me? Uh, it's like, will you grab me a soda? So, uh, yeah, it's mental it, or physical? So uh, it will be physical. <laughs> so by forcing yourself to throw, she literally sticks her hand on her throat and begins to throw up, which will give you your assist for your guile test. First, you need to resolve her uh, physical peril. As uh, she suffers. Ten physical peril. Oh, no. As she's literally gagging and heaving, and maybe her fingers go a little bit too far down her throat as she's uh, retching off the edge. <laughs> Alright. You were probably shaking. <laughs> yeah. But now so it's now, so now Tara when you need to make a routine guile test. And uh and uh Lisa needs to give you a the cyst die. Right. If you fun. succeed this, if you succeed this routine guile test. <laughs> you will manage to buy yourself enough time to get them off the ship. Okay. Without routine, any further violence. Routine go. Gave to the guy who excels in fellowship. I believe in you. Yeah. Um, that'll make it 48. And a 75 or an 85 just won't do it. Oh. Use that. Use that. Re roll. Re roll. Really think I should? Re roll. Right. Yes. Right. This is how you guys live. <laughs> this is how. Well, we'll see what happens. I this is surprising my nerve. I vomited. You have to throw <laughs> your fist. A 41. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> you managed to convince them that clearly you all are diseased. And they will. I'm assuming you will let them disembark. Yeah. Oh, shit. oh, yeah. <laughs> the Madeline comes to a slow, or a long stop. Roll and move the momentum it has behind it, slowly crawling to a stop. And these things, with great caution, giving you kind of narrow eyes, and clearly convinced that the meat is diseased, will immediately exit. But in return, they will demand that a number of oxen is given to them in your broken tongue. Are they giving me a number? Uh, yes, they want five of your oxen. That is the deal. Or they will simply take all of them they command. Yeah, this is not a time where uh, I feel like I'm going to try to bargain them out of this. I will communicate like, they want five of the oxen. I, I suggest we uh, adhere to this. Uh, to these do terms. They don't have bargains. <laughs> Can we do it with five I mean, Oh, uh, <laughs> We can get to the water, they can have all of them. What the hell are we going to do with the oxen? Yes, yes, take them. I'll, I'll nod vigorously and I'll say, I'll say, thank you, we die in peace. <laughs> they will uh, viciously begin to um, un unfasten the oxen from their yolks. Clearly they know how to use complex tools. They are, they are not simply primitives after all. Mm -hmm. But they will, the oxen will, will groan and emit all manner of terrible, terrible sounds. As you will, as you all will have to sacrifice your oxen, five oxen, which will be two corruption for everybody. Uh, in return, you all will live. Uh, and as the mountain folk had came, they simply they disappear in the mist of the, of the nearby waterfall. You all bring a sigh of relief as you all crawl. On, you all gather once again on top of the mountain line, trying to log what happened. Jonathan stands there proudly, proving his worth. Sort of awkwardly, like <laughs> darting from person to person, like realizing that, like he grabbed onto the arm of like a soldier who could like cut him in two, and just sort of like <laughs> backing up, checking to put himself between all of them and his wife. <laughs> Remind me of her name, Cecilia. She's breaking my Cecilia. Heart. She's <laughs> shaking my confidence. Yeah. Terwin will uh, love stay behind me. Terwin oh, will she nods. stare stare him down in the eye, and he will continue to walk toward him slowly, and he'll 
take his hand and he'll reach out and then he'll clasp it on your shoulder and say, Before, you were nothing to us. He was a dead wife. I avenge you, Keith. You haven't earned me trust yet. But we're closer. My husband has nothing but the best of intentions, she says in her, what do they call that, a mid-Atlantic accent? Transatlantic. 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 But the best of intentions, of course, you see. Well, as much <laughs> as I appreciate your uh, weigh-in on the matter, I believe he can speak for himself. Isn't that right? I suppose I can speak to a number of things on a number of subjects. There we are. If you'll notice the uh, current change in your state, <laughs> looking over the horizon as the uh, as the uh, the mountain uh, savages uh, ride away, oxen to No, no, I, that, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I, I apologize. Why'd you say something you didn't mean? Let me rephrase. I meant it. It was not the right thing to say. <laughs> Nonetheless, okay. no one is getting eaten today. I think you should know the history of this particular uh, tribe. They uh, they were isolated during a, uh, a major battle. It's a very fascinating story, actually. They became sick, and they ate their own dead. And then they still bore children and were able to teach their children that they would, in fact feed on the flesh of men and each other. Well, they're savages. That's all I need to know. Fascinating as this story is. Warren, could you look at Banneke? That's so much more complicated than that, though. Uh, You're not giving it the the consideration. I I love the scholastics. Once again, Warren. No, listen. (laughs) Yes, yes, I can. Who is your, uh, who is your mender? Do you have, and I'll sort of, like, point it to of Banneker's, uh body. That's, Who was your mender? That's him right there. Right. Do you need a hand? Certainly, yes. All right. Y'all right scared the pants off that one. Sammy Newhouse says, and the girl stutter who's billing up beside Warren. I told them that we were sick and they were, we were no good to eat. Because that was their intention. They were hungry. At least it goes to wash out now. I'll say this, <laughs> not looking as we uh, go to Banneker's side. You strongly suspect that uh, any further harm that may come to you due to the uh, the mountain folk has likely been saved at this point. That the uh, they have likely will tell others as well. So you, I take a good look at, at Banneker to see what sort of condition he's but he's been knocked out. He's all cold. He's needs some water splash on him. He got knocked the fuck out. Okay. I'll, I'll splash some water on him. Okay. You awaken. Imagine the camera's like in the water looking up toward Banneker's <laughs> face as it's been pushed into the waterfall. <gasps> you come out, your hair is wet, and you come to very quickly, you know, copping up water. Didn't think you'd wake up, did you? We didn't die. Here we are. Uh, I figured I'd wake up, but on a spit. So, yeah. I told you not to go this way, boss. I told you. Yeah, you did. No but did you say. die? That's behind us. Let's let's move forward. That's all we can do. Well, okay, well positivity is disgusting to me right now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get back on this fucking piece of shit. Ship that we are dragging across God's green earth here. You're still on it. No, I thought they drove you all just embark. Oh, okay. You're on the, you're on the ground. Oh, no, they <laughs> drove me under the waterfall, so. I'll help him to his feet. I'm gonna go and sleep. I, I know that. I, I know that our first conversation was not exactly the most like. Hmm. Well, well, forthcoming it was. I did not lie so much as I simply withheld. I've taken none of your foodstuffs. My wife and I can very well account for ourselves. Thank you very much. All I simply did was give a fraction of an extra strain upon your oxen as to while I uh, weigh more than the average man. It's not that much more. And she weighs significantly less. 
Making my cases. I find that the cases tend to go in my direction. All right, well, are we still going to still keep discussing something that's already been decided? The arguments are credible. Oh, you're uh, not going to kill me, then. You're not going to leave me by the side of the road. Oh, no. Right. Okay. Although we decided that in Hastings. Only, the only one that wanted to kill you was one. I didn't say that. I was just playing that, you know. And we had choices and stuff. You know? one. He was playing <laughs> the Nine Fathers Advocate, the barrister says, Rosalia, as she walks forward, nose in the air, and her hands kind of held together to clasp together. Is oh. that what they call it? <laughs> because, uh... I hate to take attention once again, but um, I'm not feeling so great. Uh, I know you got Vanica now, but what point would you point? Shall we take time to strike camp? Or to make camp, she says. We should. They will not uh, They will not return. They will tell the others that we are uh, a plague and to be avoided. I think we should water the oxen while we got a chance. What oxen? Well, lady, yeah. it's uh, two seasons of, uh, of court now, right? Referring to Rosalia and maybe a party that they met at the mm. time in the distant past. Indeed, Mr. Vando. I believe we have made each other's acquaintance at some point, although I believe at the time you were rattling on about the prophet. Uh, yes. I... I apologize. I think the prophet has uh, attempted to teach us all a lesson here today, for these are men of nothing but uh, could be more of the earth, and the prophet of the sky is their natural enemy. They're drawn to us like fly. There's the Mansfield. How do you yes. fare after the, after the ordeal we, we went through? Quite shaken, but we are alive. And I suppose, in part, we owe it to this stowaway, she says. However, we did make it through the Black Fire Pass. This is good. It has bought us in time. Uh, that we did. To the Kaelatirian will only be just a few days away now. So we shall be through the pass post haste, she says. So you you were right, your person's okay. You didn't wind up getting hit by any of them, them rocks or nothing? As I said, a bit rattled, Master Terwin. But all the else than that, she says. Well, forgive me, but you Thank are, you for your inquiry. You are says the most important person here. Just a woman. No less, I am glad to see you all are well and nobody has been untimely in with an ill place. Almost. The water is rather quite clear. Yeah, she begins wandering over and we'll talk a bit with Sammy Newhouse. Wolfgang has been still in, in turn. He's been yeah, he's dead. Yeah. He's actually sick. Yeah, he's, vis he's actually sick. Hrung Bigley will join um uh, barrister, the barrister, and Hrung Bigley, she is probably about as tall as these mountain folk. From a distance, you could have easily mistaken her for one, save for the fact that she walks very <coughs> tall. One, mm -hmm. would you please see to uh, Miss Mrs. Uh, Eliza? Dupre. No, no. Oh. Marius. Marius. Dupre. Wow. A couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm moved up in the room. Da 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 da. Marius. So will you make camp then for the night? Yeah, I think we have to. Uh, I mean, I don't have your to. call, boss. But I mean, if we got daylight. I say we move. I think it's wise. It is midday. Yeah, we should. We should keep. I mean, they're going to hear about bad meat. But they're also going to hear about oxen. Moving so, along the path, will you attempt to treat? Yes. Elisa? Yes. Elisa? So, Elisa, what is your current damage condition? Serious. 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 She's serious. I'm okay. 
It's a standard test. Standard deal. Right. Well, I guess. I Fortunately, you have fresh, uh, fresh uh, water, water from the waterfall. Well, oh, I may as well course. take my time. You're not going to slow down it at the. I mean, if you're on the, the boat, you're not. In the okay. Boat, you know? I'm on the I'm on the boat. I'm on the boat. Okay. Yeah. Well, Captain's we has a ship's ship's captain's wheel. It actually doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's like Arrested Development when they put Buster up there. He yeah. He's, he thinks he's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a captain, mother boy, mother boy. <laughs> As do I. So, uh, do you have a bandage? I do have a bandage. Spend it and make your test. Okay. What's the difficulty? Uh, it's standard. Okay. Just add plus ten base chance. Gotcha. Okay. Take your time. So uh, I am rather uh, in peril. So that's going to be a uh, let's see here, fifty-four percent chance to succeed. And I rolled a seven, so that is a success. Nice. You got one step. Hey. <laughs> Anybody else need to be treated for damages? I think I was the only one actually. No, you did. Terrell. Terrell got. Terrell nice. got tore. Terrell looks oh, terrible. Terrell took like thirty something damage. Terrell is what is your current damage yeah, condition? Huh? What's your current condition? Sirs. So another standard yeah. test. All you should right. know that I'm not it's actually funny. a physician. <laughs> However, I have read more than one spell. book on human anatomy. You have health skill. Heal skill. I don't, but I can uh, treat it as a standard skill. That's nice. So I have assist die. All right. Yeah. Roll an assist deck on your hand right around, please. You Thank you. Nice. Uh, Alright, so that's going to be a 10. Nice. Yes. One step of the damage condition track. I don't see Thank you. The <coughs> huh? That's a 1. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I was speaking at it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, you sure to spin the bandage? Yeah. That was you, weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you actually succeeded the heal test. Right. Uh, yeah, do I know. So I'm, keep in mind, I'm if you help. do not strike camp, you will not recover peril. Correct. Right. I'm fine with that. Well, so I make camp, my apologies. Yeah, so we uh, we want to give you smelling salt. Anyone got me? I have a smelling salt. Okay. Perfume. <laughs> oh! I got one. Yeah. Oh, you're going to use your own. Okay. Be sure to take uh, one corruption for the oh, vibing smelling salt. And add peel <gasps> There are some compelling reasons to stay and rest for even the rest of the remaining day here. If you continue to move on, the place that we make camp may not be those of a friendly tribe, perhaps wildlife, perhaps other tribes that are not part of the uh, the one that you're entangled with. Wait, you mean they don't all know each other? It's a confusing... Uh, Assumption that they would? No, in fact, they uh, would s as soon eat each other. In fact, there is much more meat to some of them than there are to you. Ah. As they are, you know, larger. Well, I'm not going to either. Oh, either way, if you stay here, you're safe. If we move on, maybe not. Not yeah, my decision. Not I, my decision. I suppose compared to the others, I'd be kind of like a Dunashen. You know, compared to, you know, big. Massive turkey or something. Oh, so the perhaps the more civilized among them would prefer your uh, tender, small, delicate taste as opposed to their uh, giant planks, yes. yes but me, either yeah, way, yeah. I think they would prefer the more uh, uh, immobile of us, I suppose. The less exercised. Well, either way. Well, you've been trying. Your decision. And I. Hey, was you the type? You was the one that was reading the map, right? I can read your map, yes. Or that's sort of what maps are intended to. Think we'll make for. it. Think we'll make it uh, out of here in the day, or at least to the river. Well, the maps day. are drawn by human hands, and therefore by means of orienting yourself come with even minuscule flaws, which on this scale can. Just bound to great distances. Just give us your best reckoning. <laughs> Look to the sky. The stars and the sun, they will guide you properly. They Wait. will tell you where you are. You can see the stars and the sun? Well, I technically see the sun. speaking, it sort of depends on the time, but either way, 
the map is fun. The map is sort of a, a child's rudimentary idea of where you are and where you're going. But the map doesn't say we'll be out in a day, so I mean, I'm needing you to tell me that. I can figure it out. Jonathan will not give you any straight answers. <laughs> I can figure it out, if that's what you're asking, is how long. Yeah. No offenses to be meant, but I don't think we're going to get to move before nightfall if you don't stop this goddamn conversation. I'm going to bed. I'm already just went to bed. I'm, like, I'm done with it. We're going to make camp, Sammy says. I'll shrug my shoulders. Terrible. Look at Terrible. Are we going to make it out of here in a day? Let yes, me look, I'll look at his uh, at his map and some of the features and see if I can figure out based on my knowledge of the uh, sure. the terrain and the layout where we are Make and how far we have to go. Make a full floor. Or uh, navigation, that's up to you. I'll go navigation. Navigation standard. Right. Hey, look right here! 75%. Get an assist guy. Same way as assist. Uh, yeah, we got a uh, 15. Nice. Well, all right then. You're I'll right. You 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 think it's going to be about a day? It's about a day. But that's, that's just enough time. The barrister says. We we'll get it for next day, actually. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, we should take. We should uh, carry on, particularly since he already had himself a smelling salt. Let mm -hmm. me take us to Caelterian with forty-eight hours before the masquerade. Yeah, give you time. Yeah, give us all time. May I remind you, are bound contractually to fulfill this duty. You had made your mark on the paper, nay? Who made their mark in the paper? I did. Literally put pen to paper. Not I. I, I uh... You are all bound to a vow of fealty. Should you stray from your vow of fealty, you suffer a minus 20% brawn. Pen that down to Lisa, please. Yeah. You have been ensorcelled to have this duty completed. Hexenstern. So that's just enough time we need, Sammy says. So that contract said that uh, that we was going to this dance. You are to ensure that this mission is successful. Yeah, it's just yes or no. So yes will be fine, and, we'll and I'll do it. But we'll have forty-eight hours to prepare in Kaelin's area. Um, let's but just get a move on. We picked yeah, the fastest rat yeah, for a damn let's, reason. Let's go. Let's we just on. had those bastards climbing up on this thing. Is it still sturdy to move? Well, sturdy enough. Every time we stop and get moving again, I see more and more bits of wood falling off. Mm. Nah. I ain't no expert, he says as he's looking at the framework that he's rudimentally constructed around us. a huge cradle of timber and rope and nails. But it seems like one of those things where we just keep going to hope, the, hope that the gods doesn't fall apart. But every time we stop, get going again and a good lurching from the oxen, well, a few more bolts may pop out. Get the hells out of here. Yeah. Firing that day Rivalkawin certainly loosened up a few things too. But we only have half a day we can travel today, right? Because it's That's right. So I'm, I, he keeps wanting to, like, he keeps, like, but then <laughs> stopping himself, like, but... Stop squirming and say what you're going to say. You'll be there tomorrow, regardless if you leave now or if you leave in the morning. How did anybody else not get that? That's why like, Banneker already went to sleep. He's, just, he's already prepared you're going to break camp. All right, let's make some fucking camp and stop talking about it. I'll build a fire. Come on, Warren. All right. Let's go rustle up some sticks. Mm -hmm. So you will rest in safety uh, for the rest of the day and most of the night and awaken the next morning. Uh, however, uh, because of the failed um, wilderness checks earlier, you all awaken to imperiled. But you are restored. Can I prepare a tasty meal? Uh, this evening? You yes. sure can. Okay. Uh, make a... Uh, so in the mountains, well, yeah, because I think you bought food stuff. So yeah, it's going to be a standard test. Okay. You bet. All right. So that is survival. Yep. Uh, standard test. We do forty. Camp follower trade. Forty nine. And that's a fifteen. So that's a success. Nice. So how, how many people uh, can eat your uh, tasty meal? My uh, my fellowship bonus is a four. Uh huh. So I will take one. 
Who will the other three be who eat from your soup? Any who eat from the camp follower's soup will go up one step of the damage condition track and peril condition track. You and me, yeah. So Elisa and Terowin, and you have one more person you may select. Who will you share your cups with this evening? Who else is Anybody else damage? Anyone else? Anybody else got damage? Nope. Play lightly. <laughs> All right, I'll sure, eat. sure. We'll I'll eat it because of the peril. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, everyone um, also recovers to a hundred. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, right. that it is a very tasty meal, a soothing meal. And he actually warms stones in the cauldron that night that seem to be covered in algae. And he whips up a very interesting uh, stew or brew from the leftover bones from meal from a few days before. It's quite tasty and warming in this autumn weather. While we're uh, while we have the downtime, uh, Harper's going to find out that uh, Terwin's shield has been ruined. Uh-huh. And offer him his. So I know it ain't the same. This one's metal. It's but, bad. But I'm just saying, if you wanted yours, they give me extra hand on the reins. Sure. Just make sure you're standing next to me so I can use it. Well, yeah, you just make sure you stand next to the barrister. That way, uh, it's uh, yeah. been protective. It's true. So you have a metal rim shield. Metal shield. Protective That's quality. Encumbrance, too. Is it protective and defensive? No, it's just protective. Nice. Wait. So. Well, light shields are defensive and That's right. light. Or, sorry. Wooden shields are defensive and light. Yeah. yeah. Metal is defensive and protective, I thought. Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah, I'll, it's, I'll, it's I'll in the back of your book. Yeah, so. I will take it. Yep. Cool. So the next day comes, and you will strike out. And you come, and you leave the, you manage to leave the, the valleys, or you come down into the valleys, I should say. Um, Is it the hidden valley? Is there a ranch coming from the... <laughs> the black fire passes behind you, and the violence and the folk that dwell within those... Within those hills. And as you descend down through the, uh, as you descend down from the mount from the stead wall into the surrounding vales, it's in the back of your book. I see. Yeah. Uh, you descend down to the vales, and there's a light rain kind of falling down a cold November rain. <laughs> <laughs> and a cold November rain. A very light shower, I should add. However, there's quite a bit of wildlife around here. There's a lot of lush grass. There's a lot of grasses that would normally be lush you would expect in the summer months, but they've turned gray in the winter and yielded to, or sorry, they've, they've turned gray to the autumn and begin to <laughs> yield to the um, to the season. The trees have already turned their leaves and most have fallen already. They softly crunch beneath your feet until they are wet and your boots are covered in mud. The uh, madeline is creaking and groaning along the way and somehow still in one piece, although Sammy does say along the path that every time we fire that rubble quinn, it knocks something loose and I'll be damned, we fire it again. I just don't know if it's going to withstand it. The whole thing could come crashing down. It's a damn risk every time. Nonetheless, you continue along the way through the hills. You stop later that day to break your fast, to let the oxen drink from a nearby creek that it looked like a silver strand kind of twisting through the uh, low valleys when you were up still in the stead wall the half a day before, but now is a, a nice, cool, running creek that co- kind of comes across a number of rocks. The road begins to broaden, as clearly there was some sort of road that maybe once was here. The actual Blackfire Pass itself was perhaps once a road, overgrown, but you can see standing rocks and cobblestone here and there kind of intermingled within the earth. You hear something out in the woods, a long sound of perhaps some sort of moose or something else. You're not really sure. So, uh, did you know so much about these parts? What's that? 
listen for it again. He clearly wasn't really paying attention. I sort of lost his own thought. I hear that it's like, you know. That honestly sounds like a wind uh, flute. A wind flute? Mm -hmm. back, back up north, we, we call them elk. Call them running through lanes. They kind of call out like that sometimes. I do many instruments. That's a that's a, a multiple tone. Like they've made something is made flutes that they plant into the ground, and as the wind blows through it, it makes different tones. It's not a beast. Ah. If it was planted in the ground, how come we didn't hear it before now? I mean, it's just in and out. Probably because it was planted in the ground here and not somewhere else. Ah. <laughs> we've been here for a bit, mate. Oh, we're moving again, boss. We're doing well. But did you forget that we got back on the Madeline and started moving? <laughs> were they able to recover any of their horses? What's that? Were they able to recover any of their horses? No. Okay. Only you have a horse. So they're all riding up on top of it. Or walking. Or walking. Uh -huh. We could take the ship back, because that's down fucking river instead of up. <laughs> We're getting close to the river. There's the axe water. You can see just out there a few miles. You hear Sammy call from the top of the ship. You've yet not broken your midday stop, but as you climb up and you kind of come up on the crest of this hill, you can see that this creek actually kind of winds its way through the uh, lowlands toward what looks like a great roaring silver river out in the distance. You're probably still about several hours out from it, but you can see it from here. You can see it, the sun reflecting off of it, at least. That's, but the, without a doubt, that is the Axe Water. That is the river that the actual formal border between the Rovang <clears throat> Girdle and Aglador, the westernmost border of the Rovang Girdle. We're close. You'll be in the lands of King Cassander Malister. The unifier before you know it. All agents of uh, are all uh, agents of a of a potential coup. So we're about to go over on uh, your own side of things. Yes. <laughs> Again, though, I didn't put my mark on that paper to take that woman's money. I am a king's man. On the orders of the brain agency, right or wrong. Yeah, oh, he's right. Every man. We didn't have those more. orders when you put your name to that paper one. Mm -hmm. We're all by ourselves, right? Certainly, yeah. You're all by yourselves, save for Jonathan Vander and his wife Cecilia. <laughs> Cecilia. C -c -c I don't but probably know the details of you their can, arrangements. You can make whatever all, excuse right? you need yeah. to. Hey, if they're giving out money. It was just a mark on paper. You can always go back on it if you need to. I don't see why we need to I don't see that drum way. up old drama. We got plans ahead. We need to be fixing. I do not have plans ahead. My requirements will be fulfilled once we get this thing back. <laughs> well, you're just along for the ride, apparently. So No. Hi. Right. Because I was originally part of the agreement that we had with Hexus, and I did not sign that paper that you did. Hey, whatever. Enough. Tywin, what are we doing once we get there? Or Tywin? Who is Tywin? He's a Lannister, alright? He's a lion amongst men. <laughs> well, Tywin. I don't know. I don't know. Heroin. <laughs> I don't know of any lions or nothing, but. I'm just saying. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> that woman wants you to do even more now. I hear what you're you've saying. You've been cuckled, is what you've been. Your contact, the snake in the grass I always knew he was, has done you wrong as we expected. Listen, I, I, I understand what you're saying. You, you were letting us know that... You got cuckled, yes. We have been cuckled, and now we're in for more than we initially bargained for. And it's true. It's you all true. You keep saying we. 
but yes. I meant we as in this. You were letting us, we, <laughs> know. And oh, I'm well, saying... I'm just I'm, I'm pulling for Jay. I'm saying I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Good, good. So, again, we've been over this many times. Do you trust me? Uh, that's a hard one to surmise after what you just did, boss. Well, you need to figure that out. Okay. And of course, I'm going to tell you, you should be able to, but only yep. you is only you is going to know. So, if you trusted me before, I'm still the same person. And we'll get through this. I trusted the man who wouldn't go to the bar <laughs> bar But we made it through. We so here, here we stand. I'm telling you, we made yeah. it. Yeah, and if you if you if you want to keep making it through these things, you just stay by my side. Um, as you wish, boss. So what's on the agenda now? Well, the barrister will join at some point. We're not far from Kael Tyrion now, should. Mr. Vanda's reckoning be correct. I suspect that, Sammy said, we shall unhitch the oxen from there, shall take the Madeline upriver to Kale Tyrion, mm -hmm. to the castle. So, we shall moor the Madeline in the wharf and, um, I'll make inquiries and ensure that we have a place to stay, a place of safety, while we are there. Is there a, like on the boat, is there like a crane that would be used to bring cargo aboard? Uh, no, it would actually be on the, the docks. Okay. So there would be no way to get these oxen on the ship. Well, they need to be to on the ship. Build gangplanks. All right. Well, if we're going upriver, wouldn't they be towing from the shore? You can certainly do that, too. I don't know how to pile a boat. I know how to drive cattle. Well, I know a little bit about piling a boat on a river, at least, Sammy says. I wouldn't call myself no ship's captain, but I've certainly piled a barge or two down this damn river. And the Bassins River in my time. I can help with that. That's probably good. <laughs> I ain't quite got the uh, my water legs beneath me yet. To be fair, about the shallowest draft I think I've had any ship is the Bassett River, and that's only about 20 foot deep. The axe water's hundreds of feet deep and wide and slow. Slow is what we need. That's right. Well, we can lash up the oxen to the shore, and that'll probably help. Mm -hmm. Or, if we just won't want to worry about dealing with it, we can just uh, drove them up and sell them when we get in Calterian. Your call. You're the expert. Well, well was Wolfgang's got the call on that, but Fallen Hills he has. I was reckoning. Hey, the John Marston voice. It's about as good as I can get. <laughs> well, I was reckoning that, you know, if we're headed up river, what conveyance are we going to get there other than the oxen? We're not going to push it, are we? That's it's what, got no sail. It's with the it's got, you got got giant sails. canvas back there that I keep pointing to both of you guys. Well, those, those, those ain't quite the sails you're thinking of. I think Warren's got the rod of it. So we need somebody to make a decision. That's the... Let's just get the cow on the boat terrible. and let's go. Well, no, you, you tie the cattle to the boat and you haul, the, haul them along. It'll be easier than on, on the ground, but... The whole reason we came to the river is so that nothing would be on land when we went. Well, well there's no way to get them up there. Yeah. This boat ain't gonna go up river without, without a sail. And trust me, we're going up river. We're going up the axe water. We're south of Caltarian. And we go sail. No, it's, he says that's not canvas house. I think it's no, it's like canvas, it's but it ain't a sail. We could take some time to turn into a sail. What was there a canvas shortage or something? No, it's the balloon full the zep. What did you call it again, Lisa? Zeppelin. Okay. So then we need the, we need we need the oxen in order to even make it through the river. All right, yeah, so we'll just <laughs> tie them up, make them lead it. Let's get on with it. All right, sounds like a plan. Let's do it. All right, now, come on, let's go, he says to the 
to the oxen and leads them down toward the river. And with that, you will come down into the mighty axe water. A very broad, muddy, roaring river that splits the forest in twain. In some places, it roars loudly as it's crashing across rock until you get to the point where it's deeper. And you can see that there are kind of surrounding ponds and lakes around here, too, where it kind of pours out into the uh, fields. It's rather rather swampy, uh, to say the very least, uh, this entire, this entire this, the entire river itself. Yeah, and surprisingly, uh, I have actually not downloaded any sort of River music yet what? for Sirenscape. Sirenscape. By the way, thank you, Sirenscape, Thanks, for Sirenscape. music. <laughs> um, I actually have a witch's tree, but it's okay. I can find some. Um, nonetheless, uh, you all kind of come to the edge of the river, and Sammy and and others uh, will uh, attempt to be in mooring up the oxen to the ship. And with some great effort, it takes about two hours or so, they, you will tie the oxen up strategically to have them draw the, uh, draw the um, madeline into the river. And from that point, uh, you'll begin deconstruction uh, of, the, of the cage, the, the, the uh, what do I call it, the carrot, the, um, yeah. The cradle? The, yeah, the cradle. Sorry, the cradle. yes, the cradle uh, that once held this. And it will take most of the day until the sun sets. By the time that the sun sets, actually, is when you are able to actually get the ship, when you're able to finish the ship. The ship is actually on the river at that point. Um, but then it is sundown, of course. You will be forced to camp here for the night. Yep. Which okay. is not a bad thing by any means. Okay. Maybe we'll make you another meal. So tonight, uh, it's a more fertile area, so it's going to be routine for you. All right, so this time it's going to be 69% chance to succeed. Nice. And that's a critical success. Whoa, it says three so times three the number times, of people. Uh, fellowship damage. That's right. Yeah, ourselves a feast. So everyone will restore to unhindered uh, in the group, and you will also go up one step on the damage condition track. Nicely done. Okay. The next day. The ship is on the river. The water laughs softly against the Madeline as it bobs at first, creaking and groaning with the great weight that it has. There are no, unfortunately, there are no, uh, there are no um, sails to guide this. But the river is slow, and it will take quite a bit of effort from the oxen to pull this up. It's not very uncommon by any means. The river is very, very broad. It would not be easy to cross this. Imagine. Imagine the, the Missouri River at its widest, uh, further south. It's kind of what it's like. It's very, very muddy, uh, very dirty river, surrounded by, a, by thickets of trees that are missing most of their leaves. The Axe Water, of course, being the foremost uh, channel that leads to the Gulf of Mandos, uh, should you follow it south to Roalina and then the channel. So this is like a half mile where the White River, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It actually goes south, uh, it goes north all the way to Cauldron Lake where Old Lork sits. And it'll go further south some about two weeks until it reaches Rowaline and Chander, the holy city of Rowaline, then eventually Chander, then the Gulf of Mandos, which will take the Goth Lord. This is the means of ingress and egress for the, the Aradane and the Dale and the uh, Romanians uh, within the kingdoms. So you will fight a bit against the river and such uh, as it begins to head up that way. Sammy is kind of still tinkering with the Arkwright Cauldron aboard the Madeline now that you're actually off the road 
Um, every once in a while, you'll see a flash of green light in the middle of the night from below the deck. Uh, and you hear kind of a <laughs> sound, almost like the sounds of like a sail luffing, um, like snapping. But uh, it's something else within the belly of the Madeline itself, the crucible. Would you say that there's smoke on the water? Uh, maybe. What you think that sound is? It's, that's a complicated question. Lisa would probably be the foremost uh, person to speak to of that. She's the one who spent quite a bit of time uh, in Professor Hofstorff's uh, study. Go through the notes and that, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I still have his journal. You still have the red book, that's right. We can try to guess. I'm not entirely sure, but... Yeah, you can always give it a looks over. We got another day or so. Just gonna kinda, like, not sneak or anything, but kinda just stay hidden like shadows kind of thing. Trying to make it not obvious that she's going down there to look at it's sweltering and hot in the belly of the ship. There is a burning fire that's in a pair of twin hearths, and that illuminate this room almost like a like a like a like a room of an inn, but it's very small and cramped. And these hearths cast a very baleful light within it, and a tremendous amount of heat. And you can see what looks like this broad-bellied, best to describe as a cauldron, uh, but it has these ribbed teeth. And its belly is open with these grates. And uh, there is some strange burbling, black-ish looking liquid within it. Uh, all around it are these series of uh, snaking pieces of iron that twist in and out of it. And um, Sammy has been taking some rudimentary schematics and been creating them on paper. Mm-hmm. And there's all made of bolts and uh, large monkey bar, mon- mon- those monkey wrenches and other tools and an assortment of tools that you cannot imagine would ever begin to help assemble this thing, but it's a very complex machine. Whatever this thing is, this Arkwright culture. It... Whoa, you almost scared me! He says he turns around. Oh, apologize. Just heard noise down here. I wasn't sure what it was. Well, he takes the heavy monkey wrench and Tong, tong, tong. If you imagine like striking like a large vat, the sound that would make with more liquid inside of it. I've been trying to do something here with this cauldron, but I just can't. You know, I uh, I'm a tinker, I guess, of a sort, but just ain't been able to figure it out yet. What are you building? What is it from? Well, come on up, and I'll show you. It's sometime toward nightfall, and the moon is out, and the ship is still moving. You hear the water lapping. The others are kind of top deck. It's actually fairly placid and quiet. Like, you've actually haven't had a moment to, like, sit and relax <coughs> for quite some time. And the moon has kind of grown grown to its, to its full, and you can see the Leviathan's eye shining down blue in the distance from the remnants of the, the blood moon that had been exploded in the sky some you know, three years ago. It watches over you, Warren, and you can feel her burning eye upon you. For others, it is simply a cool autumn, autumn night. Sammy and, um, and Elisa come top deck. Well, hey, Vanek, you mind giving me a hand here? Yeah, sure, sir. Take that mooring right there and pull that awning out. I want you to pull that rope as far as you can. Get all the slack out of it. He begins pouring the, pulling the rope, and you can see that this kid starts to... As you hear rope kind of like unspooling, and you can see it kind of almost like form this, this cobweb of, of canvas over your head. It would keep you from getting wet, but it's perfectly horizontal above the, uh, above the deck. All right, now, Harper, climb, climb up that masthead and take this with you. He hands you this kind of what looks like fluted leather, almost like a great bellows, but it's snakes like a bellow. Take that one up there. All right. And uh, take this pin and put it through the hole. That's going to hold it in place. All right. 
You see, I think that when you put whatever it is, you put in the arc rack cauldron, whatever it does, it fills that big old balloon up. And the balloon fills, and that's what buoys the whole damn thing up in the air. But I don't know exactly how it goes this way and that. There ain't no there ain't no wings or anything like that. They're long broken. He points toward the edge of the ship where you can see what looked like perhaps something once would fold out from it. You can almost imagine like a bat wings kind of folding out, but the whole thing has been destroyed. Uh, it's in, in bits and pieces left in your way. I'd imagine some way this is what helps pilot it. Because it ain't just a matter of getting it in the air, it's about getting it to go forward. And I ain't no expert. I know I ain't got what we need, but I've still been tinkering with an awkward call to nonetheless. I think I figure out at least the way it kind of works, he says. Well, that'd be nice flying in. Well, well, wouldn't that be a marvel, he says. A regular barnstormer we would be. I wouldn't think we could control it in its current state. Probably one way to make an entrance. Well, man ain't meant to fly, that's for sure. That's yeah. a fact. That's very true. Well, I don't know if it is ever going to be meant to be controlled. I mean, it crashed when it was fixed. Well... Yeah, he's got a point. When it was supposedly working, it just ain't, it ain't meant to be a, a natural. You can tumble on a horse. It doesn't mean that necessarily a horse isn't meant for riding. Just saying. You realize that if it was not for the incident, the prop not have been, may not have been born. Cecilia yes. Vander says. Well, well. in two ways. So it, it seems, though, that the heat rises. Correct. So you catch that rise with this particular fabric, and maybe that's what drags it up. Maybe yeah, so. Heat rises. Yes. Have you ever noticed? Um, if you're in a building. Hotter upstairs than it is downstairs. Upstairs, yes. Get to open the windows upstairs. Or if you have a cellar, you you put things in it that you want to keep cold because it's underground. And the, right. The ground's cold. Yeah. Right. But the, the heat does not fall down into your cellar. No, 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 just because you're closer to the algal, closer to the sun. That's why it's hot upstairs and not downstairs. Right, well, that's what mm -hmm. you said. Yeah. yeah, it's not right. No. So yeah. I mean, that's completely wrong. Right? Um, no, it's not. No. If that's that was, the way it is. Well, if that was the truth, then, at night, wouldn't it mean that the upstairs is colder? So we were just in the mountains. At the same temperature. Well, well, I don't know, you bunch of ragamuffin idiots. We were just in the mountains and it was colder there than it is here. Because the mountains have snow. That's because there's yeah. snow. And, well, no, but they're closer to your stupid but, sun. But, yeah, but mountains is higher, so if hot air rises, then no, shouldn't the mountains would be hotter. Right. If they were not, not present for this conversation. <laughs> 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 right, they'd have that hot air up there melting that snow. Yeah, separately. You know I mean, what? This is what they call sorcery. Next thing you're going to tell me that, that, uh, that uh, my hole is round. Well, you know, it's not broached certain subjects that appear to be difficult to explain. Oh, yeah. Time's a flat so anyway. circle in the middle of this conversation. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sammy's drowned during this entire conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, assume what you will about the, the workings of the world, however. If you were to put a hot or a, a source of heat under something and capture that heat, it could rise well, the fire is hottest at its source, right? Yeah, there was a time yes. when I fell in a fire and I got up pretty quick. There you go. Yeah. That's that's exact. Obviously, that's what Look, I meant. What I'm saying is, can't argue I don't with logic. Terwin, Kevin, why aren't you <laughs> argue with logic? I don't quite know the workings of this. I, all I know is whoever made this thing was a a mad genius, touched by the gods, certainly. What madness to drive someone to make something like this? Someone who wants. I think madness is correct. Um, hey, there's an old pair. There's an old uh, fable about somebody flying too close to the sun in the Librum. There is. Might be. Yeah. Um, Never got around to actually reading it. Maybe yeah. how, that's what happened to this. Is it got too close yeah. to the sun? Yeah. That's well, what it means. Because heat rises. Yeah. It was it's awesome. hotter up there. Hey, there you go. Yes, that's all. <laughs> we come full circle. <laughs> See? Uh, See, you're learning. You're learning. Here we go. It's hotter and higher you are. Yeah, like I not. said. I think, I think I'm just going to keep on the ground. Keep my feet on the ground. Well, I thought this thing fell in the middle of the night. Anybody know that story? I don't really know well, about your prophet. If you have only these contraptions, if you have only the, the, the one that you've spoken of, we only have this um, heat collector, if you will. 
Uh, there must have been some means of propulsion. Something to, to push it. Well, I've come to call it the hot collector, if you will, but the hot collector, uh, yeah, yeah, the hot. however it makes it go, I don't think it's drawn by oxen. No. Something makes it go. Um, we ain't got the means to do it, though. No. You know who would? Mm -hmm. Whoever built this damn little thing. I believe it would be, uh, I think from the reading, it was bottled lightning. Huh? I thought it was the uh, the academy that built this thing. No, from the reading we did. Yes. So, so they took the things that made Rumble Butler's run and they put it in a in a ship. So you get a big old lightning rod and you put it in glass and you stick it in that contraption down below. That's just that yeah. just sounds hot like hogwash. Well, as long as you close it up, like, and then it's bottled. Oh, lightning! It's not lightning. No. You do understand that. What do they call lightning? They call it bottle lightning. I didn't name it's a it. It's matter of speech. It's because of its combustibility. All like, right. Like when you when you see a see a flash in a black powder pan. That's right. Like that's called combustion. Like pie shot. Yes. Yes. There you go. Wi wizardry. Right, wizardry. Mm -hmm. Oh my mm -hmm. bro. Now we have gone full circle back to the idiocy. So Jonathan will come down into the crucible sort of mid conversation. <laughs> curious as to where everyone has gone, sort so, of hearing the voices come up. So you're saying that bold water is like me calling a wizard a wizard. What? I don't no, no. I know I know that they're not wizards. We call them wizards. And so, bottled lightning isn't lightning that's been bottled. It's a manner it's, of speech. It's a manner yes. of speech. So, yeah. what you reckon if I shot a, a flintlock inside that inside that cauldron? What do you think would happen? No. Blow what if I know? No. <laughs> the pull it down. What out. What are you doing? No, don't. We have worked so hard to not die. Can you please continue that effort? Jonathan steps in the middle of the conversation. Please, putting his please, hand please under show some restraint. Do not fire flintlock pistols at anything. <laughs> Things in here do not react well to bullets. Well, if you say so. Most things don't react well to bullets. Yeah, well, sell us something for us. That's a fair point. I'm sorry? I might want to save you ammunition. We're trying to well, figure out whether this is a heat collector or a hot collector. What? what she she what? says oh, that heat rises. I'm saying the higher you are in the sky, the hotter it gets. Because you're closer to the sun and all. That's why you can't fly these things at night. Jonathan, don't even, don't even attempt to go here. Why did, why are you talking about the workings of the? Uh, how did this, how did this come up? I don't He's understand. been down here tinkering with this thing to try and get it oh, to work. Please, please, I'll put my arm hand gently on it. Please be there. Of course. So, please so careful. from the books that we have here, Elisa and I have been reading them, and wait, it explains how to use this thing. What books do you have? Quite a few. Well, really? Yes. You have the professor's belongings. You have his, his writings. I do indeed. Oh. A smile will come across his face. Well, she's got the, the main book. It is, uh, that actually explains this. Though I know I don't speak quite as much on the subject, so I am an academic, so Well, isn't it uh, ensorcelled so that only certain people can read it? Or encoded, or I think it was the word. There is indeed a codex that you It's have written to... in scientific language, so that's you, can't, you can't figure it out. That's what it is. Right. No, this is... Uh, it's magic. Might as well be. It's sort of... Uh, to answer your question best, it sort of works like the, uh, the steam in your teapot does. Quickly boiled liquid will rise, just like the, uh, the pressure of air that forces your, your teapot to whistle when you're making yourself a cup. That's right, it's hot up top. Well... That's true enough. That's true enough for the purpose. Right, but the tea kettle don't boil off and fly off the, the, the stove. No. You know, it just screams because it's getting hurt by all that. just trying to give you a representation, Joe. Oh it represents so much more than just the idea of whether it rises into the air or not. This, this represents the entire changing of an age. Jonathan, you might as well say that it's simply harder because it's up high because it's closer to the gods. That's going to be the closest explanation to this. Yep. I mean, <laughs> can't argue with logic. Honestly, it's as good as uh, it's as good as most, despite the fact that it's obviously like 
I have tried. But it's obviously wrong. So. It doesn't matter. This doesn't is going to change, but I, I do agree with you, and I do understand what you're saying, and I appreciate your dedication to reading. Yes. Well, I, the maiden I'll voyage, obviously, before the maiden voyage, we need to tuck a chicken under our arm and do a spin five times with a full moon, correct? Uh, well, you, you do if you that? know what's good for you. You're going to have the Ivor Wand to make that happen. Yeah, and I apologize, I don't have my supplies. The Ivor Wand, it's the key. Oh. Yeah. And are you still hurt? Of course. No, I'm serious. Oh. Look, he yeah. pulls out a piece of paper. There's an ivory of one that literally goes in a hole down there that makes the whole damn thing turn on. Wait. She look at it. <laughs> you can see this schematic that he's clearly hand-drawn. This is what I figured out. Like every door with a lock, it's got a series of tumblers inside of it. Yes. This cauldron's got a series of tumblers inside of it, too. I've been fishing around in the oil that's in the bottom of the pan. And I can feel that there's a number of um, gears. So I started, you know, dicking around as I do, uh, and kind of feeling out and drawing it as I felt it. it. Took me a little bit, but there's a, a keyhole of sort, as I can tell. And I've tried sticking everything in there, some what? such, but <laughs> I figured that if I can get something that's sturdy enough and can be carved by hand, like like ivory, you put the ivory wall in it and turn it, and it would turn the whole thing on. You discovered a clue. I the ivory wand. Why wouldn't you make it out of ironwood? That's much more sturdy of this material than ivory, I reckon. You can get no ironwood around here. Well, I didn't say you would, but where the hell are you going to get iron from? That, those are from those big old beasts with the tusks. Well, uh, that's down like, you got to get that stuff from like Hebra. I expect you can get it from the wild hog. I'm just saying there's places in uh, the ivory wand is now a it's now something to add to your people places things. Uh, Feel free to add any notes to it as you wish. Is it a clue or a people place thing? Yeah, is it a clue? Because I have clues. It's a thing. You have clues. I have clues. That's fine. That's absolutely Um, fascinating. Well, yeah. So it's it's a, a crank mechanism. So it ain't like a wand, like a gun. No, no, no. No, literally, it's the length of a wand. I'm telling you, I felt it out. Right, it's about yay long and about as thin as a finger, about to my elbow, to my thumb tip. That's about what? Yard and a half? It, All right. That's, it's it's a an turnkey. I- so what's, what's... It's an ivory wand, I'm telling you. Okay, call it what you wish. Obviously, I know what the mechanic of it though, is. So though. what does it open? But it opens the thing to... To turn it on when all everything's set right. But what's inside it? If it's locked up, what's inside it? Well, I think they lock it so that way no one can just use it. Right? Know the story of what happened? I'd say hellfire. Oh man! It's a mechanism to start this cold. The boiler. The tea kettle. A really complicated one. It's, a, it's, it's like a pulley and a rope. Whatever it is, I'll be a good quarter mile away. away. Sound terrific. Sound terrific. It, it Sounds terrific. Well, that's at least of my reckoning, I think. I don't know much more than that. This is just from my own tinkering. You know, when Wolfgang got a hold of this about a month ago, I was going to say I was rather intrigued. Took himself out a big loan to buy it. He did. It's a well, shame we got to give it up. Hopefully it pays off. Well... <laughs> Paying off, uh, he's trying to, he's, he's, well, he's giving it up, I suppose, but didn't necessarily pay off his debts. His debts? Well, as most are in the Rindle, the sun, the moon, the stars, the Baroness, caught the eye of a lot of folk. Wolfgang, just another one of them in line. Wolfgang went and bought this from, uh, very powerful merchant. And owns quite a bit of money. When the Baroness called for him, he offered it up. Not even a thought. Right then and there, right in her throne room, he said, I've got the greatest gift that you could give somebody in the West that will turn them to your cause. The very thing that had lifted into the sky. So now, 
Wolfgang owns a big old mountain of debt. And he's just giving it up. No wonder he's so happy. Yeah, well, I mean... I wouldn't erase the debt. No. Uh, we definitely won't erase the debt yeah, unless the Baroness... Maybe he's banking on the Baroness giving him the money. What? He owes the money, though, to a man named Bruno Lehman. Bruno Lehman. money on this movie. This was discovered by... Uh, at the school. What's that now? He says. Wasn't this... Contraption discovered at the school? It, it was built no. by the school, crashed in... To the foundry. Oh, so once it was crashed, the merchant took it over. Well. Do you have Bruno Lehman as one of your NPCs on those cards, Adam? I don't have, think I know so. who he is. He was mentioned by the Lorenite. Yeah, he's the lead Casey. of the... Uh, He's an unimaginative brute. Mm -hmm. Guiding hands. He's the leader. Well, that's who Wolfgang owes our money to. Really? That's who you bought it from. Why would he have bought it in the first place? Obviously. Curiosity. Say, wait, that's quite a bit of money, though, to spend for curiosity, don't you think? Well, look at it this way. If the church was willing to sell a relic, wouldn't you buy it if you had the opportunity? Necessarily. No. Jonathan will uh, nod excitedly. I sure as hell would if I had the sort of pull that Wolfgang did. Something with these kind of mechanisms I'd be far more interested in, but a relic. So was it Wolfgang that bought it, or was it Hexenstern that bought it? Wolfgang. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolfgang bought it. Oh, Wolfgang bought it. Well, That's right. With a great... Bought it from... Bruno Lehman owes him quite a bit of sum of money, and he just gave it up for the Baroness. Well, sometimes there's things more worthwhile than money. Oh my God. I think the favor of the Baroness is going to be one thing that pays out. Here we go. Well, I certainly hope it does. Well, when a fit queen owes you a favor... Nonsense! Oh, I mean, I'm just saying. Could you go to your bunk and take care of this, please? <clears throat> well... Like, I mean, taking care of it? It's one thing if she actually owes you a favor. It's another if she just believes you did it out of the goodness of your art. And hey. she owes you nothing. Well, to be fair, the Baroness never showed a, any sort of ill titan toward no one. I mean, everybody who comes in her orbit, well, they reap the rewards. I mean, look at Hexenstern. He was just some random soothsayer. Now he's like her... Right hand person. And as I understand it, y'all are pretty tight with them. No, no one. No one at all. Not even a not, ne not even a Baron Lyndon Genevieve. Well, he says he leans it a bit. There's no one in Durindal. Are we we're among friendly company here, right? He looks toward Banneker. No, oh, is that for me to leave since I'm a king? No, no, no. I want to talk to you about something. I think you find this intriguing. Sure. Say what you will about the Baroness. There's no doubt that her relationship with uh, the Baron Genevieve goes quite a ways back. You know that she was a uh, she was a war hostage. Yeah, some woman knows that. Yep. Forced into marriage with the Baron. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bore no children. None of them. Yes. You go through their divorce. The Baron leaves Durandal. Madeline takes her old name, Dupre, her main name, that is, builds herself up pretty tall and mighty in Durindal. Keep in mind that the Durindalese have been loyal to the, Dal to the Dalton Thorns for generations. Mm -hmm. She's got their love. She's got a story about her, a sad story to share. Everyone loves her. Now, much like the Baron, she certainly has her own predilections. A lot of men... Some women in and out of her bedchambers. In fact, some of the, uh, the bell guards were charged with taking down and uh, seizing a bunch of lurid pornography, portraying her and a number of other people in her circle. <laughs> well, that's just ridiculous. Is it? He'll grab his bag. Well, well, no, I mean that what? it's ridiculous they would do such a thing to a fine woman. Well, I'm sure you 
one to look at if you had the chance, wouldn't you? I have more self-respect <laughs> and self-control than that. Look, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but the bottom line is the Baroness has done nothing to do nobody wrong, save for divorcing some low-born Jenny from the South from the Ma. That's her worst crime. Everybody else who comes into her orbit su succeeds, gets... I wouldn't say rich, but given what she's trying to do, I think a lot of people, including Wolfgang, are banking on that happening. After all, what's it mean when a queen owes you a favor? Exactly. When you brought the greatest gift in the world to Kael Tyrion to, 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 to ensure an alliance is sealed. I'm sure Wolfgang's banking on that. All I'm saying and I believe him. All I'm saying is, who decides that the queen owes the favor? Look, you can hem and haul over does. this all you want, yeah. and I know y'all got your thing, and I respect that, but I'm a simple person, and I ain't never been met no damn Baroness in the in Durendal, or saw the damn Queen in her undies, whatever you want to say, but mm. the bottom line is, is that Wolfgang believes, knows, the Baroness will owe him something, and that's how he's seen it. He'll succeed in the ways that his great-grandfather didn't. Hmm. Right. So, it'll be interesting. Maybe now, on this day this thing will fly, maybe we'll fly on it, but... Here comes the interesting... I reckon I'll keep my feet on the ground, thank you very much. Here comes the interesting part, 24 hours. It's not going to matter what we find out about this particular cauldron here. Let's just call it. It's going to be gone. That's right. I think uh, you, you make a good point, uh, Lady Marius. That's probably the last time we're going to see her until she's docked up. Well, you, you just want to be the next Arkwright, ain't you? I ain't no wizard, but uh, I am a curious type. Well, what do you think the, the guy who's getting, what's his name, the Baron? What do you think he's going to do? Oh, there ain't no, no Barons getting this. I don't know who the person that's going to. That's between, uh, that's between, uh, the barrister and the baroness. Well, they don't share that sort of stuff with me. It would be a mighty shame if this never thing, if this thing never saw the sky again. Well, you know, just on a lark, you know, it'd be fun to just take it up just once. No doubt about that, but I think our uh, voyage with the Madeline will probably, I think our fly, I think it will terminate when we get to Calterian. It's a damn shame too, don't you think? He looks toward Elisa. So yes, that's what I've been doing over these past several weeks. Trying to figure this thing out. Well, I mean, what for? I mean, if he knew it was going to be gone. Curiosity? Why else do you teach yourself to do things? Uh, you get a hankering and you do it. I suppose so. You ever get no hankerings, Grawlstutter? <laughs> we all get our hankerings for this and that, but, you know... At least it leads to something most of the time. Well. Curiosity. Hankering. Have, have you heard of any other uh, machines like this one? One would assume that there's not only one of these in the world, right? Well, I know. Wolfgang talks about and Roeline, they got uh, horses, carriages, rumble butlers. Run on tracks throughout the city, so I hear. Just a few, not not too many, just one. But those don't leave the ground. That's right. That's why this gift would be so amazing once it does get squared away. So you've heard of no other instances of anything like this? Goodness, no. We weren't meant to take this, guys. I mean, that's madness. It'd take a mad person to want to do something like that. I mean, like you said, even if you get it up in the air, what the hell are you going to do? You're going to... Burn up by the time you get to the sun. It's too hot. Right. Heat rises. Yeah. We'd, we'd leave my hall and be dead. We'd, we'd go through all those holes in the sky. Oh. He points toward the stars. We'd be eaten up by some giant ether serpent. Yep. Or we'd fall off the edge of the world. Who knows? What I'm saying is, no, never heard of anything like this in my entire damn life. We weren't born with wings for a reason. Um, 
right, well, you guys have fun with this. You need me to shoot something. Let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to bed and we're getting up early, right? Jonathan finds himself constantly on the uh, verge of almost saying something <laughs> and then stopping himself, <laughs> uncertain if he can trust his company <laughs> or not. But, yeah. This is sort of a constant look for him. He's kind of well, nodding in place and twitching like he's a very strange fellow. Sightful. And you over there, do you need to use the bathroom or the facilities of some sort, or, or, or are you trying to speak? That's a very rude thing to say. Well, My goodness. I'm sorry, this is just simply what I does. If he forgets that people are looking at him or nearby, he'll start like making like strange humming noises too, and things like that to himself while he rocks back and forth. He's probably not crazy, but he, he behaves very oddly when he doesn't think people are looking. Well, you, you are uh, another person that is somewhat learned, yes? So what's your thoughts? Somewhat learned? I don't know your <laughs> background. Huh. Well, then why would you assume somewhat learned? To not know my background and to assume that I, is sort I, of a grave insult. Well, why would you assume I was not learned at all? Well, we can assume was it your damn stowaway. I don't think you have to assume that. I'm pretty sure that that is uh, decidedly proven. I mean, sorry. Correct. You're fine. So. You are fine. Yes, I I am. And I hope that I have made amends for that. I hope that my accounts have been of some use. Like I said, it's a start. It's a good start. Well, make, make a hell of beans anyway. We get to Calitarian. You're donezo, as they say. <laughs> That's what we say. Not donezo, that? but gone. What, that, what does that mean, donezo? Well, you ain't uh, got no ship to stow away on anymore. Man, Not like you're traveling more. with us. You traveled with for this thing, right? I mean, I suppose it depends on what happens after that. I don't really have an idea. But I'm sorry. I know that you did not intend to... Uh, I, t- I took a front far too easily. And you are right. This is a this is your this is your camp and your and your boat. But I, I hate to see someone give away the future of the northern world so quickly and without provocation. Things that are built once tend to be built again. That's as much as I can say. Though. Well, you got about 24 hours, so uh, have a gander. But uh, it ain't yours to keep, so. Uh, and my understanding, it won't be yours either. Exactly. So you can uh, follow along the boot heels of uh, whoever does it. Can, can we speak plan for a minute? We're going to Kale Tyrion. He's looking around to make sure the barrister's not here. We're going to Kale Tyrion. Mm-hmm. And we, get a, we all got to do this business. I put my name in the paper, too. <clears throat> As did Wolfgang, as did Lady Bigley. And most of us. What, yeah. what paper? Well, we're to see to... Uh, He's going to sign the contract. We're to see that this going-ons and kale tearing goes right. And frankly, between you, me, and the fence post... He kind of points over his shoulder like expecting a fence post to be there, because he's simple folk. Between me and you and the fence post, I... Uh, I don't think I'm really equipped to be hobnobbing and rubbing shoulders with people with bonus silver forks up their ass or silver spoons in their nose, wherever the saying is. Well, you got me there. I, I was I was up there in the uh, the uh, palace with the, uh, the the baroness, and you know you just kind of shuffle along and do the dance, and that's how it goes. Well, we've got someone who's actually pretty lucky with dealing with them. Hey, you got us a job. You're you're born blue blooded. Well, no, I'm a I'm a burger myself. Uh, if you want the higher ups, it's uh, that one over there, and she's pretty fancy too with her education. Well, and the then, education, yes. Her name carries weight if she chooses to say it. Say it. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Depends on where you're at. Clavenger carries a lot more weight than Marius, and just like I'm sure in different places, maybe uh, Iron Eye carries different weight. So here's the uh, when you say the word iron eye, he he shoots you a dirty look. Sorry, and, I didn't and mean you just said her last name. No one's supposed to. I understand you have me. Your name's Forster. 
Forrester. Did he say Iron Eyes? Iron Eyes. Did he say her last name? Is that say her last name? He said Mary. I said Ravager. Yeah. Huh. And she just goes. That's, uh... Do I know well, that? Oh, you, yes. I'm glad you don't know my last name. You know all the names. Oh, really? Yeah, Bannister. I don't know your last name. Oh, really? It's Banneker, no. please. Right. Banneker. I am Elisa. Nothing more. Well, it's all right. I mean, he bows and bestows us to a person and then oh. speaks all of our secrets. Hey. No. Hear me out for a second. I got my mind. Oh, we nice. got a person. Thank you. Barrister, I was talking to the barrister before y'all came, and we signed our paper too a couple weeks ago as we prepared to leave and got this damn thing ready to take west. And the barrister was saying that we got to present this gift in the middle of this party, right? Yes. Now I don't know what the hell I'm going to say about it. It's a, it's a clap trap we drag across the Rovane Girls Green Earth. To bring here? That ain't much of a story. I can't spend no story around this. Fought giants to get it here. I ain't no rock on tour, but I can't be the one to present it. <laughs> really? The barish was an emissary, so they ain't really on her to do either. Y'all made it clear you don't want me speaking, so I'm gonna leave it up to you. Why would the emissary not be the one? Because she's got a role to play. Don't you know nothing about how the blue bloods work? I have a slight idea. Well. As my friend has so uh, thankfully told. But, what are you giving us, Sammy? One of us is going to have to do it. You got to tell a story about it. Spin it in the right way. In the way that people who were born on a, on a higher shelf than us can can understand. Now, the way I see things is that they would somewhat expect less of a delivery out of me because I'm from a military family. But I don't think I'm the right one. And Only so, if you had the gift gab. I deal with other people, just not the higher ups. And who would one propose to do this? One or two people. And seeing as how it may not look the best for the king's man to be presenting this to someone else in the name of mm -hmm. someone who would call herself a queen. If he wished to do it, I'd allow him, because he is an aristocrat. He's looking at you, Jonathan. I'm literally, like, teeming with excitement. <laughs> Like, I'm literally like shaking it and shaking it and like kinetic. I I I I was meaning Banica, but I don't want to put him in that position. And seeing as how you want to rely on what you have done and not your family name, right. which, by the way, you've done a marvelous job. You've made me believe. And deeds, not words, rather than warning shots, not words. You should be proud of yourself. Well, and so it falls truly to one if they wanted to continue to make it right. Oh, oh, you would not. I would do. I mean, yes. Listen, there is no greater authority to. Living authority, I should say, to be able to speak on this thing than I am. I would be so glad to sing its praises and tell of its of its tale. You, you do no realize I, I have one reservation about this plan. Would the prophet be coming up in your particular story? I think that it's a significant at this point that we bring up and briefly discuss precisely who the prophet is and what that means. I think that you may have the wrong idea. Well, here's the thing. If either of the two of them decide that they want to be the ones, they're going to be the ones to do it. You want a bunch of fanatic rules. I'm sorry. It's not one to give away. 
Jonathan, why don't you explain what you mean by... Please. And, 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 and maybe the shortest terms, because I'm going rambling. The shortest ways are not necessarily the best ways. Words are important. Yeah. Long books are good books. Please, you are a very rude woman. I can be. Uh, you are... You can only can be. You are literally non-stop. You have insulted me gravely four times since this conversation began. And I'm not certain what I've done to you to deserve that. Listen. This heralds the beginning of an age. The age of the earth is over. Our entire history to this point is told about walls. And breaking those walls. Once the Madeline arises, walls mean nothing. The prophet does not herald the beginning of an age. That age will herald itself. Certainly you must have the imagination to understand exactly what this means. Yes. Yeah, it makes sieges a whole different thing. It makes sieges gone. Gone, yes. It doesn't exist anymore. Everything changes. We won't that be around to see that, will we? It'll be long past when we're dead. But, Pretty here. but this thing is not... I have spent a life, as I'm sure you have, in pursuit of reason and knowledge. But this thing is not entirely driven by reason and knowledge. Mm. And that alone, through my entire life, for a loop that I have not yet recovered from, like a tail-spinning bird with a winged wing. It is more than that. It is driven by something primal and something esoteric. And the prophet was at the moment that that touched the earth. He bears something. And I know because people have eyes and those eyes are connected to mouths that you have seen it. That you were there. That you've seen what he can I will not bring it up when I discuss the when I discuss the map line. I'll raise my hand in the background. You make wooden swords turn into fire, or whatever that was. It's not better than what I was going to say. So whatever it is that we can't figure out what is going on with this thing is the thing that made the profit. Yes. So is that simply put enough? It is. So, so you can see, you can hear Elisa drumming her fingers on the red book, <laughs> the red journal that uh, Professor Hofstorff uh, was given to her from Hexenstern. Someone here has to do the present, uh, presentation. And so, I'm assuming you don't want it. Not I, said the bold. I'm assuming you don't want it. Particularly. It's gonna be him. That's like, fine. I, again, just... I don't care if this Okay. Fails. I, I am perfectly fine with that, and I understand that there needs to be some kind of grandiose gesture that comes along with it, because it, obviously a machine that could possibly take flight is not enough, it appears. But if some tail must be spun that goes with it that makes this gift seem that much more important, I only ask that any kind of religious connotation be left off of it, for it is something that tends to be we say controversial. I swear that I shall not do so. That's all I ask. And from there we will stop. Good members, episode 41. Thank you all for watching. Everybody gets 100 reward points. Yeah. Uh, and we get to do something new. What's that? So, does anyone have corruption tonight? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, I first, actually have five corruption? Oh. <laughs> You're wondering how I have five corruption? It's because I lied. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I lied to like uh, to savages, I uh, I betrayed a uh, an oath, and I gained three corruption every time I lied. So, yeah. Is that what, what's that from? It's from the uh, I don't remember what it's called. The scholars like. Uh, oh yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. You are you basically have like sort of a vow to truth, and to break that vow is to. Whoops. Yeah, you know, I, I I I took into account that it was seemed worth the risk considering like the fate what was being faced. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, good session. This is actually our first kind of nice talking session for a while. Um, I'm certainly glad, Walter, you found a character that you can get into and play. I mean, clearly Alistair wasn't kind of drawing you in, so this is a good change. He just didn't have anything to say was the problem. Yeah. He, like, and being brooding and silent doesn't really work that well for a gaming table very much. Yeah. You just sit there and eat. And I think it's important to note, too, <laughs> that uh, the, 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 the interactions between him and Elisa are not primarily antagonistic. And there's really nothing personal there either. Girl. <laughs> yeah, right. well, she's like a 19 year old girl, so. What's she, she, she actually is. It's sort of she a. She also doesn't. She uh, is kind of. It'll be a fun dynamic to I see. Think we, uh, I think we clearly both have egos, which I think oh, might yeah. come into play, and mm -hmm. I think that's going to be like the primary thing. She is also militaristically atheist. That's great. So, so um, any. So, how do we work with you? Are there any advances this week? Oh, yeah. No, it was last week. Okay. So we will conclude our game session. I think I'm actually we lift the lid up of the laptop real quick. I'm going to try to affix the camera onto the wheel of corruption. And for those of you who are watching, um, who have who played Zweihander, yeah, I'm gonna lock it in real quick. No no no, you don't get to touch it. It's me. Uh, so what you are seeing here beside me where Nick is pointing, uh, we normally roll a 1d10 corruption die <laughs> to determine whether people gain corruption, but we've actually bought a spinning wheel called the Wheel of Corruption, and there are 12 slots on it, numbered 1 through 10 for the corruption value. There's one that's called the Nick Spin, and the other one which is a random player spin. So... Normally, a game master will roll a d10 corruption die, uh, and if, if you're, you know, you go through your corruption values, and if it's, um, you know, you know, the, you know the math already. But now we're just gonna roll. We're gonna spin this because it sounds pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, I bought it on a whim, and uh, remember, if the value is less than or equal to the corruption gain, increase your chaos rank one step. So I'm gonna spin it, and we'll see if it lands on Nick or random players' spin. So here we go. It landed on random player spins, and I think that it's only appropriate uh, that Walter spins it tonight. All right, That's all right. right. not so random. <laughs> <laughs> new character, right. new spinner says, "Come on around here and spin the wheel of corruption." Can I make the uh, prizes right? You can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nick spins! Oh no! <laughs> wow! This is not weighted, by the way. This is this is crazy. Uh, so, for those who listen to Queen of Embers, in all of our games, Nick oftentimes leans towards chaos with his character, so he had to have a, oh, a, a slot here. We falls into it. Alright, so. Alright, here Spinner goes. spin. It's gonna be a lot. <laughs> The value is oh, eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Eight corruption. Cool. Well, that was fun. So, <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for your patronage. We really hope that you enjoyed tonight's game session uh, as we move into kill tiering and some heavy politics stuff. We will see you all, I believe next week because when we got one episode of it tonight Ooh, which is great so probably be moving into a new chapter i reckon uh soon. not quite yet soon though soon. all right guys thank you all soon. take care bye. bye remember look at the camera